Travis Bader, and this is the Silvercore Podcast. Silvercore has been providing its members with the skills and knowledge necessary to be confident and proficient in the outdoors for over 20 years, and we make it easier for people to deepen their connection to the natural world. If you enjoy the positive and educational content we provide, please let others know by sharing, commenting, and following so that you can join in on everything that Silvercore stands for. If you'd like to learn more about becoming a member of the Silvercore Club and community, visit our website at silvercore.ca. Holy crow, episode 100 of the Silvercore podcast. Here we go. So this one's going to be a little bit different. I'm joined by my wife, Tiffany Bader. Welcome. Thank you. And what we did is we reached out to past podcast guests and to the Silvercore podcast audience and asked if you had any questions or comments. And we're going to be reading them off and answering those questions throughout this episode. I should let you know that in conjunction with this podcast, there's going to be a pretty sweet giveaway. Yep. There's a scope, SAI scope from Armament Technologies. It's going to be given away. You got to pick out some key information from this podcast and look on social media because the social team will have that one all organized. But uh, make sure you pay attention as we go through here for your chance to win a pretty darn sweet scope. Post it on all social media, right? Yeah, yeah, it'll TikTok, be on all. Instagram, Facebook. All this stuff, yeah. Oh. And there's going to be some Silver Horse swag in there as well. Excellent. Before we get rolling, I really should say thank you. Thank you very much for everyone who has liked, who has commented, who's subscribed, and who's shared this podcast with their friends or anybody else who they felt would find value from this. The only reason that we are where we are right now, the only reason that we're at episode 100 is because of you. So thank you. So without further ado, why don't I give a quick introduction for you, Tiffany, and you can fill in any blanks if you'd like. Uh, Tiffany, we've known each other since we've been teenagers and because you were always the earner. You're the one who went to school, went to university, have the degrees, working in the fancy office jobs, bringing in the money, which allowed me to learn how to be a businessman and learn how to be an entrepreneur in my early 20s. And uh, mind you, you didn't stick around in those jobs very long, did you? (laughs) (laughs) I was motivated, just, you know, not very patient. (laughs) You found something else that you had a much more passion for, which was cooking and working with food and ended up working in a number of very high-end restaurants and prestigious restaurants. And that helped because we could get wholesale food when I was bringing in very little and the restaurants are paying what restaurants pay. And uh, now because of that, Silvercore was able to be thought of, started, and based on the hard work and the uh, ingenuity and the ideas that you bring to the team now uh, is where the reason why Silvercore is where it is. So oh. super jazzed to be able to have you on this podcast, even though it's not your first time. You're on the Fly Fishing, Women's Fly Fishing Group podcast. Yep. And apparently the audience wants you on here too, because I did... I don't know what they're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> some, some of these... Some of these questions I've seen, some you've seen, yep. but we haven't seen them all. So. Do you want me to start? Why don't we? Why don't we? What okay. do you got? Okay. I will start with a question from unknown. Uh, I never know what to expect from each podcast episode. Is that intentional or did it grow into that? I personally like the unknown. Has it ever backfired? Yes and yes. <laughs> so yes to both. Is it intentional? 100% is intentional. The reason it's called the Silver Core Podcast is because it allows me latitude to talk about things other than, let's say, if it was the, well, popular podcast, the Meat Eater Podcast, you know exactly what you're getting into. It's going to be talking about something to do with eating meat or, or, or around <laughs> there, right? Yeah. Uh, so 
I call it the Silver Core Podcast. It gives me latitude to talk about whatever it is that's of interest to me that I think will bring value to the audience and bring value to the guest. Has it backfired? Well, there's a couple of episodes that have never aired and some are because of some recording issues and maybe something else. Wouldn't say backfired, just hasn't always worked out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, Learning experience. Right. And I guess it's like working in the kitchen. Only the perfect food leaves the kitchen, right? Exactly. So if we have something that we don't think is going to be bringing the perfect level of information or entertainment or education to the audience, then, um, then we just kind of hold that one in the... Uh, yeah. In the back burner. And often no fault of the, the guest at all. Well, absolutely there's, not. There's been a, a few that were just technical difficulties and stuff like that, which mm -hmm. is a shame. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> all right. I got one here from a uh, past Silvercore podcast guest, episodes 55, 67, 99. You've heard him. It's Seb Lavoie. Nice. And I got his name right this time. Awesome. Yeah. Unlike <laughs> <Those> French names. <laughs> unlike episode 55. Very first one on, and I butchered your name. I'm sorry, Seb. Yes. Um, man, Seb, I'm sure he'll be on in future episodes. He brings his A game every single time. Uh, Sean Taylor, XJTF2, past podcast guest, he says, you know, Seb is a true leader, and he really is in every sense of the word. Uh, he's got his mental health walks that he does every single week, every single Sunday. Uh, he's going to school building some pretty cool things within uh, what, what he's going to be bringing to, to everybody else. I'm excited when he's able to finally announce that to everybody. So without further ado, he says, the platform and quality of the podcast is unmatched, but it still seems to be fairly underappreciated in my opinion. Hey, thanks, Seb. <laughs> <laughs> what is the plan to grow the audience and bring incredible value to many more folks? You know, it, it's sort of a catch-22. Because just like in business where I don't chase the dollar, I don't chase the likes. I don't chase the audience. I don't chase the, uh, the size as part of what I'm doing here. But that is one of the measurables. That is litmus, right, Tiff? Yeah. That's one of the things that people look at and they say, well, where are you ranking on the, uh, on listen notes? Where are you ranking on? I tend not to look at these things because you don't want to be disappointed if it's doing poorly. It in the same way, you don't want to be taking a whole bunch of pleasure if it's doing well, because then if it does do poorly, it'll have the equal amount of impact on you as it would if it's doing really well. But I guess I'm going to continue to follow the same thing that I've always looked at, and that's to bring in the best quality people with interesting stories who are going to help elevate the audience. And that's it. Yeah. And that's what I'm looking for growth. Now, we do have a very talented team at Silver Core that works behind the scenes and helps coordinate everything. And, and I'm sure they've got their ideas and plans for how, uh, they can see growth happen. But for me, I just want to see a positive community of people who enjoy the outdoors and enjoy being better on a daily basis. I think in the same way that you say that the podcast hasn't been about getting listeners in the same way the business hasn't about, isn't about chasing the dollar. You haven't, strictly monetize the podcast either. And as much as it takes up a lot of your time, uh, which has really been a blessing for you, mm. um, it's been an amazing outlet for you. I think the fact that you haven't monetized it and you don't have sponsors supporting everything and paying you for doing this podcast, it gives you a heck of a lot more freedom to do what you think is right. When you say something, you mean it. You're not saying, I love blah, 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 because they gave you money to say it. So mm. it, it creates a path forward that's pretty exciting, and fun, and uh, leaves things really open too. Yeah. You know, I've, and I've always followed the mantra, follow our heart, right? Mm -hmm. You follow your heart with work and everything you do. I follow my heart with business and everything I do. And if I get too caught up in the likes or what everybody else wants, it becomes an echo chamber and totally. you just start delving down. Maybe everyone gets really vocal and they liked one thing. And then I just kind of specialize in that. My personality type just wouldn't, wouldn't allow no. for that to make me happy. No. no. Okay. Cool. Okay. I'll ask the next question. Yep. Okay. Okay. Another question from unknown. Uh, do you think the liberal handgun ban will ever be reversed? Yes. 
You said that since day one. Yeah. Yeah, I do believe that. And I base that not on having any inside knowledge or, or really anything other than my gut feeling based on people who are on the inside and speaking with them. Um, whether that be politicians, whether that be within the firearms program, I, I don't see this as being a long-term thing that's going to be in place, mm -hmm. this ban. Uh, I don't see it going away very quickly, even if there is an election and we have a completely different government. Uh, but I do see the handguns coming back. And, you know, if we look at the phrasing of it, it's not actually a ban. It's a, I'm going to do an air quotes here. It's a freeze, <laughs> right? That's much more palatable. Well, if it's frozen, it can thaw. And I yeah. do believe that'll happen. Yeah. Yeah. You've been, you haven't advertised it from day one, but it's, you've been pretty steadfast on that. Yeah. And if someone asks me. You're also a positive guy, but I think, this has been beyond positivity. Yeah. I think to be an entrepreneur, you're always glass half full, <laughs> right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> yep. All right. Let's see. Past podcast guest, Jason Budd, episodes 34, 49, 84. Man, Jason, amazing individual. Uh, Ex-British Army. I've known him since I've been about, what, 12 years old? Yeah, a long time. Yeah, long time. Like 70 years now? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Vancouver Fire, ACMG Guide. I mean, he's uh, he's done things that most people would be happy to accomplish in one lifetime. And he's done multiple things like this. And he's, uh, I'm sure going to be on future episodes. Very, very interesting individual. He says, the Silver Corps podcast is very inclusive. Your podcast and your guests are a reflection of that. There are many diverse experiences and stories that appeal to different demographics. What are some of the other areas or interests or guests you might want to explore in 2023, 2024? for your podcast. You know, I, Jace, I think it's going to be along the same trajectory. If it's going to bring people value, if it's going to be something that will, uh, bring insight or education that'll help a person get outdoors. Cause I find the outdoors to be therapeutic, awesome for mental health, awesome for physical health. Uh, and there's a hook that ties into the guests that allows them to do that. I, I see that as being the, the major push. That and just constantly striving to find people with unique experiences and unique stories that'll, that'll sort of, um, break past the traditional narrative of what a, uh, an outdoors media outlet or podcast would be. Yep. Or any guests that live in Hawaii, cause it'd be cool to go travel there to record it. Yeah. K Kimmy, <laughs> Kimmy, we're talking to you. Kimmy Swimmy, Kimmy Werner, just, uh. Just putting that out into the universe. Phenomenal free diver. Yeah. 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 Or Matt. Yeah. Pro surfer. Yep. Matt Miola, hunter. Yeah. Maybe we'll do a couple there, eh? Yeah. Uh, actually, Jace had more than just that one question. I'm yeah. looking at it here now. He's talking about, he actually talks about you, your Tiff. He says, I see you two as a power couple. What makes your relationship function so well? What are your shared hopes and dreams? And what's it like raising kids in 2023 and the challenges, including what it takes to educate them on the outdoors? That was a lot of questions. That's a lot of questions, Chase. Chase, you could just ask us. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and really some of these things that we look at in the questions, they could be a podcast unto themselves. Yeah. So we'll try and be brief about it, but communication. Yeah. That's uh, it. That's and it, it, working together, I know I have friends that are like, I don't know how you work with your husband, not because they know Travis and they're like, how could you work with him? <laughs> but they just, it's a lot of time to spend with one person, mm -hmm. but we communicate really well and it makes our personal life stronger, our personal relationship much stronger because we have to communicate well. Mm -hmm. And we've had to learn how to do that and get very good at it. And I think... The reason why we've pushed ourselves to do that is because we truly respect and care about each other. And that's just what we've had to do. And it's, it's built our relationship very, very strong personally and, and through work. So. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Uh, raising kids in 2023, hopes and dreams. What are the challenges about educating them on the outdoors? I mean, the obvious challenge would be just all the distractions. Yeah. I mean, there's always going to be distractions, but kids today are facing just an inordinate amount of stress, distractions, um, 
I mean, you, you look at kids' sports. Now, our kids right now are almost 16 and the other one's 14. Uh, and young kids, we'd, we'd play soccer. You play football. You play baseball. And nobody expects you to be a pro athlete. Now, the kid goes into something and they have feeder programs and they have the whole thing mapped out until until their pro career, until they crash. That's a heck of a lot of stress and expectation to be putting on a kid. And then all they ever see through social media is all the glorified best moments. And some would argue the, all the fake moments. Yeah. Uh, so one thing would be just moderating social media. Yeah, screens in general. Yeah. They, uh, they don't bring out the best in anyone, I don't think. Um, minimize that. And for us as a family, we spend a lot of time outdoors. That's, that's how we spend time. We're not a, you know, Sunday afternoon watching football kind of family. That's never, that's never been our thing. So, uh, it helps to have those shared experiences and connect with them in the outdoors. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. It's how we communicate, right? Yeah. Through the outdoors and through food mm -hmm. and really hunting and fishing is all a part of that food process in the outdoors. It was just a very natural Natural progression. Yeah. And the more the kids are able to contribute in that world, the more confidence they have and the more self-sufficient they are. And it just builds them into my, I know, I may be biased, but I think better, more capable human beings. I agree. All right, Jace, I think we got your questions there. Who's next? Okay. Uh, another one from unknown. Okay. Uh, your presence is shifting online. Can you talk more about that? Yeah. Yeah, I can actually. Um, so our social media has been something that's been a work in progress for many years. And we finally just bit the bullet and said, you know, we need a team on board that knows what they're doing and can, uh, because it's not a place where I enjoy to spend my time. I mean, I can see it being an addictive place where people can spend so much time trying to build the perfect video, the perfect picture, the, uh, the perfect message. And if you look at, uh, people that are in the marketing world, like Gary Vaynerchuk, he's like, just, just get it out there, document what's going on. Done is better than perfect. Get it out, get on to the next thing. And so, um, we found people who are very enthusiastic and capable on that front. Um, and you're going to notice a much more diverse sort of, uh, display of what silver core is about than just traditionally we're the gun company, we're the gun yeah. people, and we've got a goal in mind that will bring firearms as opposed to making guns the the central talking piece to just an ancillary piece while still promoting it still having firearms there but essentially normalizing firearms because the second you make firearms object of your interest it'll attract all the people who love firearms all the people who hate firearms and then you're just talking about that and to my way of thinking, that's pretty crazy. It's sort of like vehicles. All the people make the vehicle the object of your interest, and you're gonna get all the people that love or hate it. Maybe just talk about the journey the vehicle takes you on, and the vehicle is just a part of all of that. And knowing how to use that vehicle properly is going to uh, bring you on more adventures and more journeys, and introduce you to other cool people. So we're looking at a different approach. We also have a lot of interests outside of firearms mm -hmm. and we found more and more people were asking us, oh, can you show me how to do this? Or, you know, can you take me on a foraging trip? Can you show me some mushrooms? Things like that. Mm -hmm. And we realized that we have pretty diverse interests and uh, a lot of people shared our interests and they wanted to learn more. And I think we realized that we were missing an opportunity by just strictly focusing on the firearm side of things. So bringing in a wider range of people and, um, you know, just sharing that love of the outdoors. All right. I got the next one here. Brian Niska, episode 33. So Brian was skiing a spay lodge, wicked fishing lodge out in the terrace area. Uh, top, top quality food, top quality destination, top That's quality awesome. fishing. Like, <laughs> I love that place. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. And everybody there, everyone there is just, they love what they do. They're a family, essentially. You see the same people in and out. They, they work well together. Um, and Brian's a cool guy. I mean, he's, if you listen to episode 33, you'll hear just his passion for what he does. And, yep. You know, Not even mentioning how he can uh, chuck a fly about. Oh my 8, God. 8,000 yards. 
Yeah, I felt pretty privileged being out in the river, getting yeah. some time there with them. That's uh, definitely changed me from a absolute horrible spay caster to a slightly less horrible spay caster. In fact, I would categorize myself under his tutelage as a pretty good spay caster, which, dis <laughs> which <laughs> disappeared the second he wasn't looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was a little jealous you got so much one-on-one -on -one time with him, but that's okay. The second he disappeared, uh, kind of, I don't know. So and you came back with so many different cats. Oh, you should try the snake roll. You should try. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> so Brian says, do you have a strategy to increase the number of listeners you're reaching and especially to get your content in front of new audiences? And yes, that strategy is diversity. Yeah. And that's reaching out to other groups that might not necessarily uh, be in the wheelhouse, but they have some sort of a hook or some sort of a one, even just a toe in that wheelhouse. And that is a strategy to its growth with the end goal of introducing our core values and what we do as a community to a much wider audience. Yeah. And including other people and groups that share our, our same ethos. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the, the amount of positive amazing people that you've met through this podcast is blows my mind. Yeah. You know, just to, it's not about money having a conversation with Seb, right? But, sure. you know, the influence of that after the fact is massive. Everyone, everyone who's been on this podcast, I end up learning something new and you're, t I go into it sometimes with a certain expectation and I leave always on a cloud, right? Mm -hmm. Always up high. Totally. Because there's just something magic about sitting face to face with somebody and being able to share some experiences and, and try and delve a little deeper than we normally do in daily conversation. Mm -hmm. All right. I think you got the next one. Oh, right. Okay. Um, <laughs> would you rather be a club moss or a cactus? What the hell? Okay. Who asked that one? <laughs> it's this Faustian. Okay. Would I rather be a club moss? How would neither? Yeah. I, I would rather be neither. <laughs> yeah. I've made my life by not playing by the certain rules that are in place, but finding a way to uh, navigate in a way that uh, is beneficial for everybody. I tend to look at things a little bit differently. I don't know if that's an ADHD thing or an entrepreneur thing or what it is, but. Uh, mm, call him uh, A, call him B. <laughs> How about you? What would you rather be? Let's say you had to be. You know, when you, when I read this, because I read this question in advance, I was like, I don't know how the hell to answer this question. <laughs> and then I said it to you and you're like, neither. I'm like, well, that's a good answer. I want to answer it like that. <laughs> but in the interest of actually answering the question, um, I would like to think that I am less cactusy and more club mossy and I can like uh, you know, thrive and live over m millennia and have like club moss is one of the most ancient types of living material ever. Mm. Um, cactuses can only grow and thrive in specific environments, albeit harsh, but mm -hmm. really specific environments. I'd like to think I could thrive and grow all over the place. See, that's a better answer than mine. That was good. I don't know. I, I don't know. That's sort of what I was thinking. All right. Um, I got one here. That's interesting. So why don't I take a look at Andy Danilchuk, episode 81, Keep Fish Wet. So Andy, pretty cool dude. Listen to that. Listen to Keep Fish Wet. Listen to that episode. Um, you get more insight into him. So smart, knows so much about his natural world says, it seems like Silvercore focuses a lot on risk management, predominantly for hunters and anglers, but there are a lot more people that go into the woods and onto lakes and rivers that could benefit from the tips and techniques to stay safe. Hikers, paddlers, even car campers that start to explore a bit more. Undergraduate, graduate students getting into the field of research, etc. Does Silvercore plan to do more in these spaces? Yes. That's the easy answer. It's yep. yes. hundred percent. And in fact, I think, uh, I think in the next few weeks here, Andy and I have been talking, we might actually be recording another podcast, um, just dealing, he's written papers on, uh, on mentorship programs in the outdoor community and what that looks like. And that's one thing that is near and dear to my heart because, you know, people get into the outdoors because 
what because they're interested in it they've got it they're they're drawn towards it but there's certain areas of the outdoors like hunting and fishing let's say mm -hmm. that they'll get into it because their family was involved they had a family member show them or they had a close friend or relative there's a level of mentorship that happens because a barrier to entry for some of these can be rather difficult mm -hmm. there's a huge knowledge acquisition phase some of these things are, there could be a massive gear phase yep. if you're to read every magazine and book and spay casting we're looking at you <laughs> right <laughs> and then you realize that maybe we don't need all of those little trinkets mm -hmm. and, and all that gear but you you learn that through either through time or through some sort of mentorship so mm -hmm. finding a way to have accessible mentorship for individuals is a huge push in an area that we've been working for a few years on and who knows when this podcast comes out you might actually see the launch of, of that one if not, it'll be shortly after this, uh, this episode here. Uh, but yeah, yeah, there is, there is a, a plan to go into there. And I think if people keep their eye on Silver Core, you're going to see some cool things. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Me next question, I think. Um, from last mash standing, have you noticed a growth in interest in firearms slash hunting since the pandemic? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Unprecedented. Absolutely unprecedented. We've known some people who started up businesses during the pandemic based around firearms and hunting, thinking that there's going to be this ongoing uh, trend and we are seeing that interest level kind of abate a little bit or perhaps a lot of bit. Like that, that COVID trend yeah. was fueled by fear. People are looking at firearms as a means of protection. Some were looking at it as a means for uh, acquiring food, not realizing how much there is to acquire food. Yeah, to be a, it's not cheap. Right. Or, or to be successful. Yeah. Right. Totally. You, you can go out in all the wrong places and do all the right things and still come home empty handed. Yeah. But COVID, there was a huge push there. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there's that other side to it as well. You lock a person up indoors, that's going to do something to their mental health. Yeah food shortages after COVID, um, government restrictions on, um, fertilizers and all the pushback from the farmers. And I think people are seeing that our food security and the government's ability to take care of millions and millions of people mm. is not quite as secure as we once thought it was. And so people are, you know, it was funny during COVID seeing all the the victory gardens in everyone's front yard that have now kind of, some are still doing it, some some less so is, you know, there's only so much time in the day and mm. you start buying groceries again. But we did see a lot of people start realizing that for real confidence and security for themselves and their family for their food, they need to take more of an active role in in understanding it and participating in securing it themselves. And there's been a push for a very long time to whether intentional or otherwise, to reduce the perceived level of agency an individual has over themselves. Don't worry, I can go to the store and I can get that. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, I'll be taken care of by whatever government agency it might be. And when you start to see those, those structures start to collapse, it really drives to the forefront the, uh, the idea of knowledge acquisition and that you actually can affect change for yourself in a positive way. And I think that part is, is sticking with people. Yeah. I think, I think a lot of hunters can relate to the whole, why do you hunt? There's no need to hunt. That's just cruel and unnecessary. Well, you know, during COVID when people were hoarding like toilet paper, people kind of get a little crazy and having the confidence to know that if food did run out, you could go out and get some yourself mm -hmm. makes you feel pretty good, mm -hmm. right? I don't know. Who's who's up next? <laughs> who's up next? Uh, you, your question. Am I? I thought yep. I just did Danny. No, I just did last Andy. MASH standing. Okay. Jenny Lee, and I'm sorry, Jenny. I know I've called you Jenny Lee and Jenny Lai, but you have said both of those names to me, so <laughs> I, I think I'm kind of forgiven. <laughs> Episode 19, Jenny, she was uh, chasing food club. It's not like you don't know her really super well. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Jenny. Sorry, Jenny. Jenny Lee, Jenny Lai. Um, 
And Jenny's amazing. It, she's just the sweetest person. If you check out her, she's got a couple of Instagram pages. And yep. Chasing Food Club is one of them and her personal page. But she's the epitome of jumping out of the plane and building a parachute on the way down type, <laughs> <laughs> type of a person. <laughs> she, I love Jenny so much. She's awesome. She says, oh, I just got my, uh, just graduated from the uh, core course, the BC Hunter Education course. Um, I met somebody else on that course who's also quite interested in hunting. I know. Let's do a fly-in hunt for caribou in a remote <laughs> northern wilderness BC area <laughs> for her very first hunt. Yep. And... Not only that, let's be successful on that one. She's like ridiculously successful. She the, Like the goat hunt she did where she's like, I'm just going to go off on my own now. And then like comes back <laughs> with a goat. I'm like, oh my God, Jenny. <laughs> and her love for food. Yep. Awesome. I've met my, I've met my match there. She, uh, she, I, I hate the term fills my cup, but she does with food. <laughs> <laughs> she says the first question that comes to mind for you to name Three dream folks you'd want on your podcast. I'm all about big, hairy, audacious goals. Couldn't hurt to put it out there. Ask it on the air. Well, you know, it's funny because we were talking about this a bit for episode 100. And some people are like, oh, you got to get some, like a real big person to be on episode 100. And who do you bring your wife? (laughs) Yeah. It's fantastic. Like, if, if you put that much value into one individual that devalues all the other people that have been on the, on the podcast in the past and everybody who's been on the podcast has brought some fire and they've brought something which is going to speak to the audience in different ways. Uh, I do have a list. Like I put a list of people as I, if I see them or I hear them on TikTok, I'll click follow. And I'll watch and I'll see, do they say, have the same message? Is it the same positive message over and over? Do they bring value? And if it reaches a certain point, then I'll reach out to them. I mean, John Sinai, he, yep. he's a, a good example of that one. Um, he, I talked to him, he's uh, from South Africa and he's in Dubai at the time. I'm talking with, him, he's like, what do you think a guy like me, why would you want somebody like me on your podcast? You're like this hunting, fishing podcast. I said, because you have value that will apply to the audience. And there are things that you talk about that are intrinsic to all of the people that I talk to in the hunting and fishing community. Um, so with that on the list, let's see, three, only three. Like I got a, I got a yeah, long yeah, more list. Than that. Uh, I've always wanted bear grills and yeah. based not on the fact that, you know, some people will say, oh, bear grills, did he, um, uh, he was caught in a hotel room one time or, uh, when he was supposed to be out roughing it like Les Stroud and yeah, maybe, maybe that was the production team. Maybe who knows, right? Um, what he's always done though, is brought positivity, just a high level of positivity, which he tries to share with others to get them outside, to get them active and moving. And he's been unwavering in that. He's like the youngest Brit to have summited Everest Guinness book record, highest. He's done like a re- ridiculous amount of things and he doesn't sit there and like repeat it to everyone to to you know shower himself in in praise from people yeah i remember a long time ago there was a beef between the uh, uh outdoor media folks sort of thing that probably wasn't created by those in there is probably the, the fan base just stirring stuff up right but everyone's saying oh ray maris is better than bear grills he's more the real deal or what's bear say yeah you're probably right He's a real deal. This is what I do. And I'm bringing it forward. I've always admired that level of, uh, drive and, uh, positivity. Uh, Megan Hine, she's up there as well too. Like just avid outdoors person. Um, Peter McKinnon for Canadian. I think he'd be a cool one to have on the podcast, right? Um, he's motivated a lot of people out there to get into photography and videography. I, and always in a positive way. So, uh, if I were to say three, those would be three of them. Mind you, I wouldn't say one, two, three in order because man, I got a big list of people and they're, they're all up in the same sort of category. And don't forget Kimmy Werner. <clears throat> yeah. Hawaiian is it? <laughs> Come on, Kimmy. Um, I think it's your turn. Okay. My turn. Let's see. Um, from unknown. I was really sensitive to hunting and guns prior to following Silver Corps. Through your education, my perspective has shifted. What do you think is the most common misunderstanding or judgment when it comes to firearms and hunting? 
Well, firearms and hunting. It's been pointed out. I say firearms. <laughs> <laughs> I've had to do a lot of voiceover work for some online courses, and that was one of the ones that I had pointed out. So for firearms <laughs> and hunting, a misconception is that it's all about the gun, yeah. and it isn't, right? Or it's all about the kill. Right, or that that, that part yeah. of, of the activity that has to do with the firearm. So even if, so let's say hunting, pulling that trigger is just a fraction of a second on a hunt. Hopefully there's practice ahead of time and you're at the range and you're getting everything dialed in and carrying that firearm around all day is, is going to be a, uh, a part of it. But I think the biggest misconception is just how gun heavy these things really are, right? Mm -hmm. um, hunting is about plant identification and animal identification and knowing, I mean, like we were out, uh, everyone will find something different when they're out looking at things. People will kind of specialize in certain areas that pique their curiosity and their interest, uh, you were looking at the, uh, the flora and fauna. Oh, the bears. Right. We were yeah. on the bear hunt, right? And you're saying, oh, spruce tips aren't out here. Let's go lower, right? We're, yeah. Our elevation was getting too high. I'm like, wow, yeah, I, w I didn't even think about looking at that. Good observation. You're looking for new growth, for new things coming out. So, Andy Lines and Burdock. Yeah, they love that. Wherever, not in, I'm, this isn't a blanket. If you want to get a bear, look for dandelions and Burdock. But in that particular spot... Yeah, the spruce tips had to be just so, and dandelions and burdock, and it, it, we just kept seeing bears in the same spot, same elevation. So I think the biggest misconception is is hunting is all about the gun. Mm -hmm. it, it could be, it could be a, a bow, right? Uh, but there's so much more to it. It's outdoor survival, it's navigation, it's it's all of the things that that make it up. And even on the firearm side, I mean, there's there's a huge mental aspect to it. And those are the people who do well if they're a competitive shooter, if they're just looking to be a good marksman, a good shot, that mental side is huge. And that's got nothing to do with the, the gun. And then there's all the other sides to it. I mean, if you want to go long distance with stuff, there's math that can go into it and there's muscle memory. But I, I guess that would probably be where I'd say the biggest misconception is. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Well, there you go. We agreed on something. Awesome. <laughs> That's communication 101. <laughs> um, Nicholas Johnson from the gunblog.ca, episodes 66 and 91. I like Nicholas. I do too. I, I mean, he's, he's a consummate professional. He's, uh, this is what he does. He's worked in for organizations in the media outlet of a very high level and very high ranking. He He's very professional in what he does. And when you're looking at information on his blog, you know, you're not getting some, some knee jerk reaction or some rhetoric. He puts thought into everything he does. So, um, if you don't already follow it, follow it, gunblog.ca. He says, he's got my questions in order of priority. Number one, how has a podcast changed you? Ooh, that's interesting. And number two, how have you changed the podcast? How has a podcast changed me? Well, for me, this isn't natural. It never has been. I've never wanted my face or my voice to be on the forefront, to be out there. Uh, I've always worked at building other people up, either within the company or, or what have you, because my goal is always to build a process within the company, watch it, watch it grow and be independent of me. I've never wanted to be solely tied to something. Uh, but I realized a while ago that it was time for me to have where I had to step up and start putting my face out there and start putting my voice out there. So the podcast has changed me by, um, I'm, I'm not an extrovert. I'm an introvert by, by the definition of being in a group of people doesn't give me energy. It actually drains energy. I've got to perform. Uh, it's changed me to how I speak. Like when I first started this podcast, <laughs> holy crow, you listen to like episode one, two, it would take me forever to edit them. Every um, every ah, I'd take out. I have some guests. Oh, okay, I'll just say, hey, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you'd name him. He's got a speech pattern, which I noticed. He would go, just a little one. Before every single sentence, I would take that out. Scrub the whole thing. Now I realize done is better than perfect. I work on 
I work on what I'm saying so that it's got hopefully the most concise way of bringing a meaningful impact. And it's really opened my eyes to different ways of doing things. Like you have to leave your preconceptions at the door because people will come in with some just crazy angles at things that make sense that are crazy from your, from my perception or from my perspective of how I've always done things. So I, it's, uh, I, I'd say that's been a very positive change. What would you say? Yeah. I, I think from an outsider standpoint, looking in, you've been doing silver core since 94, basically mm. teaching the farm safety course, building the business day in, day out, grinding it out and throwing everything at it. And that's a long time for you to be like, you can get super hyper-focused on things, but that's like really, really long for you to be super <laughs> hyper-focused on something. And, you know, there's been challenges along the way that kind of like it took a little bit of wind out of your sails. And it, it you know, it, this podcast has reinvigorated you and just shown you that there's a lot of positive people in the industry a lot of people that believe in the same things you believe in and want to bring you up and you want to bring them up. And, uh, for me, that's, that's been huge. It's such a massive positive outlet for you. And, um, yeah. Yeah. And you know, the podcast is here because, uh, the range Langley, Dustin says, Trav, I've been watching this guy, Gary Vaynerchuk. He says, everyone's got to be a media company. You got, you got to start some sort of a media company. I'm like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who is this Gary Vaynerchuk guy? So I check him out. I don't like this guy. <laughs> well, after a while, it's like, okay, I, I see how he's got a different approach to getting his message out, but his message, message is one of positivity. Um, Ryan, you know talking with him and I said, you know, there, there is a lot of negativity that's around the firearms industry. And he says, and we were talking about different things and really laying different stories. And he says, maybe, maybe you got to change the type of people that you're hanging around. And I thought, yeah. interesting. Yes. So we use a podcast for that. Who do I see that's doing things well within the industry and doing it from a position of positivity because it is a low barrier to entry industry. And it, which means if there's a propensity to be able to make money and that barrier is low, then you're going to get all different types of people who might not have the same, uh, morals, ethics, standards, acumen, what have you, the same experiences as somebody who's, uh, maybe a higher barrier to entry industry. So that's why the podcast is born. How do we find positivity? How do we surround ourselves with it? How do we share that with others? Uh, so that's changed me for sure. And yeah. you know, the circles of people that you meet, like that's so cool. The fact that we're getting questions from the community on this, the fact that people are, um, that the guests are interacting with each other and the, uh, cool. and the audience is interacting with the guests and just growing. That's pretty darn cool. Yep. I wouldn't say I did that, but I'm like the fact that I've, we've had a small part in making that happen. Part of the, the web. Yeah. yeah. How have I changed the podcast? Well, let's see. I painted, painted the walls. Yeah, painted the walls. Yeah, made some frames. Sound panels. Made this little table here. Right? <laughs> Tables behind us. I uh, think you've built some confidence in yourself to push beyond hunting and fishing and firearms. But always in a way that has that tied to it. Totally. Uh, I don't know how I'll say, answer how have I changed the podcast. But, yeah, I don't know. But I, but I think it's the direction where we originally started just talking. Mind you, I always knew from square one that we wanted to branch out further, but yeah. knew we needed to get our toe, just dip that toe in the pool and get it to mm -hmm. start. Okay. I think you're up. Okay. Let's see. Uh, on the surface, I thought Silver Core was one thing, a gun club. In reality though, Silver Core offers a lot more. Can you speak to the importance of shaking reputations, good or bad, from unknown? We got a lot of, a lot of <laughs> unknowns here. I wonder if it's all the same unknown. Yeah. Um, on the surface, was a gun club. That's what they thought. Uh, shaking reputations? Uh, speak to the importance of shaking reputations, good or bad. Yeah, you don't want to get pigeonholed into anything. I know I don't. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
the idea of staying in your lane doesn't appeal to me. If there's something that you really enjoy and you want to move towards, like that lane can be as wide as you want it to be and still encompass whatever is in that lane. Yeah. Uh, the beauty of having your own business. You got it. And being, having a, a federal club. I mean, originally it was the Silver Court Gun Club. Mm -hmm. People probably notice it's not called the Silver Court Gun Club anymore, but it's called oh. the Silver Court Club. Yeah. And there's a reason for that. And we are growing and it's growing past Canada and throughout North America and, and, and beyond. And it's still remains the same nonprofit, but with the concept of how do we get people outside and how do we build a positive community? More value. Right. Always adding more value. The Amazon model, as you like to say, right? Right. Give them more. Just what more can you give? Yep. Um, so I, I think it's important to, uh, to not, the, what do they say? If you're not growing, you're dying. Um, well, I, I, I do think that there has to be a level of adaptability. The world's changing. Yep. Things change. Circumstances, politics change. People's uh, priorities tend to change and you have to be able to roll with that if you want to see what it is that you're doing to survive through it. People who often say, oh, hunting and fishing is a dying activity or firearms are a dying activity. I don't think that necessarily has to be the case. They're just not, maybe the way that they've looked at it in the past might be an antiquated model, but it, just as Shane Mahoney from past, past podcast guests said, you can get in the river, you can put your hands up and you can start trying to push the water upstream and you're never going to win. But if you can find something that's floating down the river and jump on it, you're still in the river and you're helping direct the flow. You can take whatever it is that you're interested in and you're passionate about and use that river in order to reach greater places. I, who wants to live or, or run a business in a world where you feel like you have no ability to make changes or make things better. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just like, why would you bother? Mm -hmm. And throughout the process, I've always done it in the same way. I put the blinders on. I look at what I think is going to be important. If I always asked the same group that we've had along the way, I'd always get the same answers and you're then stuck in an echo chamber. And so my goal is always to be outside of an echo chamber because if we're off course, I want to be able to feel that, right? Yep. Your question, I think. Is it up to me now? It is up to you now. Okay. <clears throat> Gray Grinsmay, Carl Stetler of Wild Sheep Society. Awesome organization. They're Talk a, is Sheep. Talk is Sheep podcast. If you're into sheep, listen to it. If you aren't into sheep, listen to it. Yep. If you're just into hunting, outdoors, I mean, they got a fantastic podcast. Very popular and Wild Sheep Society is doing some pretty cool things for the outdoors in general. Uh, that was episode 46 that they were on. Uh, Kyle says, great job on the podcast. Keep up the fantastic work. Thank you, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Greg says, I enjoy the mix of guests you have on it. It's a great variety and we are striving to do similar with Talk is Sheep. One thing that I look for and something that is difficult but can pay off is recording in the field. I don't mean anything specific, but out of the studio so you can feed off your guest energy from whatever is going on at the time. It's risky, but the risk, but with risk, there is reward. Just my two cents. And he says, congrats on closing it on episode 100. That's a big deal. I look forward to listening to it. So yeah, it is risky to record in the field. And since bringing cameras into this and realizing that not everybody consumes their podcasts just through the audio, that they also like to watch the video and putting it up on YouTube, that's a whole new dynamic. Thankfully though, Canon in uh, Richmond has helped us out with a number <laughs> of cameras that are pretty top shelf that have small enough and robust enough that we can take in the field. We did do one strictly on battery power out at the, uh, hunting shack. And that was with uh, repeated podcast guest, Paul Ballard. And we're talking about flying hunts. Uh, man, that guy's a wealth of knowledge. Yep. Yep. And he's got a great podcasting <laughs> voice. I swear <laughs> I he works Paul. on that. <laughs> yes. Uh, so. Uh, that was complete battery power for the cameras, for the lights, for the, uh, for the microphones. Also, uh, Trevor public over at ATI, I took a re remote kit over there. So I've had a little bit of experience recording remotely. Mind you, we were able to plug in for that. 
There will be some campfire chats on the podcast, I'm sure, in the future around the campfire. Hopefully we don't destroy all the equipment in the process. Everyone's tripping over cords in the dark, but that is some of the goals to take it out remote in the yeah. field. The easiest way would just bring the recorder, but I don't know if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. And I'm going to have everything there. You're also kind of terrible about, um, I shouldn't say terrible. You're really good about not ruining a good hunting trip mm. or fishing trip. Yeah. You, you know, <laughs> you don't want to walk out of uh, your waders and sit on the side of a river when you could be trying to catch a steelhead, right? Yeah. Case in point, we've had the gear out on a number of different mm. trips and it stayed packed because. So many times. <laughs> you know. Having too much fun. I'd rather live in the moment. Totally. But if I can plan something specifically that we're going to do, yeah, we'll, we're going to do that. Yeah. Okay. My question now, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you speak to being in business with your wife? Would love to hear both sides. How you've structured a successful business together and seem to still, see, I love this, seem to still get along. <laughs> <laughs> this damn unknown. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, being in business with your wife, it's just, you know, one thing I would tell everybody is don't get into business with friends or family. Mind you, sometimes it happens. Yeah. So luckily we spend enough time together to really ensure that we are the type of people that are compatible, that we want to be with each other. And we are always open to reasonable persuasion. Even if we feel that our thoughts are a hundred percent bang on and there could be no other right way, we'll hear the other person out and we'll listen to their perception and their perspective. And oftentimes that process will either convince, convince me that perhaps I was wrong or through the process, convince you that, wait a minute, as I'm going through this and saying it out loud, maybe there's a couple of points within my, within. Not wrong, but just less than, less than. <laughs> 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 like you didn't say wrong. <laughs> wrong. Yeah. Yeah. That wrong. and every single morning yeah. we'll get up and we'll talk. Yeah. Okay. What are the plans? What are we doing with the family, the kids? What's a week looking like? What's a day looking like? Uh, what are we looking like for business? I think it also helps that we have spheres of influence within the business. You know, you, I, I'm not the entrepreneur in this, in this relationship. I am not the dreamer. I'm not the, the one that gets up and motivates everybody. I, I deal with a certain side of the business, um, and I think that probably, hopefully, is a good match for your, like, never-ending thoughts and, and, you know, ideas for how to drive business. Yeah. And that just comes down to trust, that we yeah. trust each other. We trust that the other person's got the, got their job function. Mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't hurt that we've got a great support team all around us as yeah. well. Everyone at Silver Core that's doing their thing, they're passionate about what they do and they genuinely care about what they do. Mm -hmm. So... I mean, that all helps. And sometimes, sometimes we're not always that lucky, right? It's, um, and that's a, that's a learning pro process. But as, uh, uh, Lucas Hogue said in this podcast, you got to know when to pull weeds sometimes. So being able yeah. to identify, uh, areas that perhaps aren't bringing us positivity, rather the inverse might be true, learning how to pull that, identify it quickly and either correct or pull it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. So it's on me, is it? That's on you. Mark Kenyon, episode 97, Wired to Hunt podcast. One of the uh, meat eater folk there, resident whitetail guy. <laughs> Man, I love Mark. I love his energy. I love his passion for what he does. And he's, you know, he's real. I, uh, he's, yeah. He's not one of these glorified, he is a hero in what he does, but he's not one of these like action figure heroes that, always shows the shiny side up. Yeah. Which is nice to see. Yeah. Yeah. So he'll, he'll show his successes. He'll show his failures. He brings people along and he's got a North star and you can see it just talking with them, interacting with them, even just watching them on his social media. There's something bigger than himself that he's always chasing. His yeah. family is important and what's being left behind for his family in this world is very important. And so his actions all work towards that. And I think that's quite inspirational. Mm -hmm. He says, what insight or lesson from a guest over the first 100 episodes has most inspired or changed your own life? 
Damn, Mark, that's a good question. <clears throat> and I don't know if I can single out one thing. Like if I look at Colin Dowler and his iron will to survive, he's in Mexico right now. I don't know. Well, probably not now. All this thing's airing, mauled by a grizzly bear, horrific injuries, like horrific. And he is able to fight it off with his pocket knife and get on his bike and pedal it with one good foot. I think it was seven kilometers yeah, or that's, so. That's the part that always gets me. <laughs> Holy crow. I mean, the amount of uh, tenacity that he had in that situation and continues to have and, and continues to have. And now he's taking others out who've been through horrific accidents or injuries and he's taking them mountaineering and overcoming um, massive obstacles and he's using what he knows to, to grow. Like, like that's hugely inspirational. Uh, Guy Kramer, I mean, just brilliant individual. I think he's, uh, he's out of town at the moment, but, um, I, you know, no university education, uh, no, no real formal background in inventing, but the things that he's coming up with, like he invented the invisible cloak. <laughs> Holy <laughs> crap. Like I laughed when I, when he first heard about this, but he brings it in. Yeah. It's a, a lenticular lens array with a, a special viscous fluid in the middle that, uh, will refract light in such a way that whatever's behind it, immediately behind it disappears. And behind that it's, uh, is visible. It's literally what people look for in an, an invisible cloak. Um, and that was neat. We're to do with a podcast and he keeps looking at his watch. And I think this is podcast like two or three and I'm just learning the process. And I'm like, finally I pause it. I'm like, look at, I'm sorry. If you got to go, let me know. It looks like, looks like I'm blowing it here. You got other things to do. And he's like, no, no, Trav, I'm just getting text messages coming through on my watch here. That was Fox news there. And oh, this is another news source. And he's like, you're the first person who's breaking the story on the, uh, on the invisible cloak. I tried to sell it to different armies. No one's picked it up. So now it's going public, but his ability to do what other people think is impossible. He never said an invisible cloak is impossible. He just said, why not? Let's do it. Like everybody, Sean, what you're doing, Sean Taylor, uh, XJTF2, what he's pushed through and now new areas that he's pushing into. Seb, what you're doing, Jason. Like, I don't want to single anybody out. Sonny, I mean, watching you fight your bare knuckle boxing, your first pro bare knuckle boxing. That was crazy. Man, I remember when uh, it was uh, yourself and your opponent and prior to the fight and Tiff, you looked, he's like, oh my God, I'm a little worried for Sonny. Yeah, this, he's going to get killed. This, <laughs> this guy looks crazy. And I said, yeah. You know, I, I don't think you know Sonny, right? Yeah. And said, said that right off the bat. Even the announcers as he's going in, they're like, oh, he looks like he belongs in the <laughs> office, right? <laughs> um, yeah. Look at this pretty boy coming in. They changed their tune pretty quickly though. They sure did. And all, all of our guests have been people who have said, why not? I want to push a little bit further. It's, yeah. So I don't know if there's any one individual person, Mark, but I think it's a cumulative effect and each and every person builds on it. And it just reinforces in my mind how much positivity there is out there and how much we can accomplish when we start surrounding ourselves with the right mindset and the right people. Yeah, totally. Okay. Next question is from Brock Fisher. Hey, Brock. Hey, Brock. Uh, if you could hunt one animal for the rest of your life, what are you picking? Come on, Brock. I know. That's, that's <laughs> what I thought. I'm like, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not. I don't know. I mean, is it like based on what? On, on the flavor and which animal you like to eat the most on the ease of getting it, if it's a story, the difficulty he, or the he challenge? He didn't say what kind of meat do you want to eat for the rest of your life. He said what, what you could hunt one animal. So I, I don't think the meat is what he's talking about. I think he's like the enjoyment of the hunt. Huh. Well, for enjoyment of the hunt, I mean, people will go and they'll book time off of work and they'll go on a hunting trip and they'll see something on day one and they're like, yeah, maybe I'll hold off, right? Maybe I'll give it a few, and then they'll see nothing for the rest of the week and be kicking themselves in the butt. And the old saying is a shooter on day one is a shooter on day seven, right? Or a shooter on day whatever. Um, but the reason people do that is not because they're hoping to get something bigger and better 
predominantly I've found is because they just got out there. And the idea of the hunt isn't necessarily the animal. It's being out there and learning about the environment and learning about the, 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 how the animals move and being in tune with nature. I don't think I could pick one animal. I don't think I could just say this is the one animal that I'd want to continue to hunt. Uh, and it's the only one because I do require, excuse me, I do require that diversity. How about you, Tiff? I like bear hunting in the spring because I can wear a t-shirt. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and the last year we got a bear in the morning and then we're picking morels in the afternoon. That was a pretty cool experience. Mm. But I don't think I'd pick bear as like the one animal to hunt. There is that added level of interest and I guess stress a little bit too, is that the animal you're hunting is potentially hunting you as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, remember Which that is, grizzly? Oh my God, yeah. No, that wasn't fun. <laughs> that scared the bejesus out of me. Yeah, that was last year. That was... Uh, oh my God. How close did that one get? That was like, it was too close. I don't know. I'd say like 30, 40 yards, maybe like max, but it just... Should we tell the story? Sure. Sorry, Brock, we're not going to answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> Bear's not my answer. I'd say moose if I, if I had to answer something. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the grizzly bear. So that was an interesting one. <laughs> We were, um, we're actually coming down out of location, thinking we'd head to another place. Um, we see a deer on the road, actually on a logging road. That was road. cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Actually, you can go on my Instagram account, you can see a video clip of it. And, um, just kept coming closer and closer, a small buck. Yeah. And, um, and I've got a, a little doe call and I was like, I'll give it a little call. It kind of comes in, give it a call. It kind of comes in closer. Like this is, this is pretty cool. I mean, deer weren't open, but I kept hearing a sound off in the distance. It kind of sounded, uh, elk-like, right? It was, yeah, it was weird. Yeah. 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 Sort of a sound like that. As, as I call back, I'm like, we're not in an area that's really elky. It's, I mean, it's, it's not known for it. And, and it kept getting closer and closer like, oh, this is neat. So I call, it calls, I call, it calls. And you hear the way it's moving through the bush. I'm like, oh, okay, that's a bear. That, that's big. <laughs> yeah, it's a, that's bear. That's a big bear. We're looking for bear. And uh, couldn't, he heard it getting closer and closer. And we're looking and we're looking. And all of a sudden in this one spot that was a little bit open in the trees, you see this flash of tawny color, right? Yeah. And your brain's trying to process this, right? Cause you've got deer that was on the road that just went off into the side of the bushes. This tawny color is kind of deer colored, but no, that was fur. Like that wasn't, it was like longer hair. It, we're, it, I remember thinking, was that a cougar? That was like the biggest cougar I've ever seen in my life. Right. And the way it moved, was just a flash yeah. of it. <laughs> it was so fast. <laughs> and then keep making the noises and then you can hear it moving back, moving back. And it just runs right out into the open, right towards us. Big old grizzly bear. Yep. So yeah, it does have that added, um, what your hunting can hunt you. And of course we can't hunt grizzly bear, bear here in BC. Um, but that was an interesting experience. Yeah. It was, uh, I was, I was shaking for a while. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Um, interesting. Sachin Lati, episode 86, Extreme Ownership. So Sachin's got it in his sights. He's going to run across Canada and he's raising money for the Honor House. The Honor House is a place that helps first responders and military um, out dealing with, with all sorts of issues. And they've got, um, uh, got a fantastic organization. So he's been progressively doing more and more long distance endurance runs, raising awareness and raising money, and he's doing it selflessly for them. Pretty cool guy. Uh, He says, who is your most memorable guest and who do you wish to have on your 200th episode? I think for most memorable guest, I can't. It's like saying, who's your favorite child? And honestly, I don't have a favorite child, right? Who's your favorite guest? I can tell you who my worst. <laughs> <I'm just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, don't do that. <laughs> uh, yes. One I, right now. 
Uh, who do you wish to have on your 200th episode? Well, I think I'm sitting across from the person I'd like to have on the 200th episode. Nice. Thank you. There you go. Here we go. Uh, okay. Uh, my favorite Instagram handle, uh, Mr. Meat Shower. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, asks, Silvercore provides so much for the gun community. What's next up on the list? Well, watch the website. Yeah. So... Hopefully, launch day is going to coincide with this. Yeah. There might be some delays. I mean, we are almost a year delayed from the last launch date, so I'm putting it within the reasonable realm of expectation that there could be delays. That being said, uh, we're pretty damn close. Yeah. So what's next? Uh, it's going to be something that's going to be bringing value to all of our members and hopefully uh, growing the community Hunting, fishing, outdoors, firearms, hiking, mm -hmm. camping, the outdoors community uh, into a much larger thing than what it currently is. And with Travis, you never really know what's going to happen next either. You yeah. Might, we might open up like, I don't know, like a pitch and putt or something. <laughs> Half the time, I don't know what's coming next yeah, until no. I do it. <clears throat> Pretty much. As long as it's fun. Um, so Al Arsenal, retired Vancouver police, episode 83, street proof your martial art, bit of a legend in the, in his industry, uh, very cool guy. Always fun talking with you, Al. Kudos to your good work. You're a great interviewer who places guests at ease. Many people are uncomfortable being filmed or interviewed. You have the ability to draw out the best in them. Keep it up, Al. Huh. Well, thanks, Al. I actually didn't read that ahead of time. I thought there's a question coming. Thanks, Al. I appreciate that. Okay. Tiff, up to you. Okay. Uh, how do you stay focused and organized with eight? <laughs> this is a question by Tiffany Bader. How do you stay focused and organized with ADHD when your biz has many branches? Uh, was that I, your question? No, it's not. I didn't write anything. <laughs> I don't know who wrote that. It says unknown? It doesn't have anything, actually. Um... You know, some people will journal. I just use the, the notes app and the, uh, the calendar app and I write things down. And when it comes to my mind of something that needs to be worked on, I'll write it down. And the biggest thing is having people around me who are able to fill in the gaps of areas where I know I'm weak or deficient. So being able to easily recognize where you're weak Surround yourself with those who can complement that so that I can double down on the areas where I'm strong, which is part of the reason why the relationship here has worked out so well. Yeah. There's a lot of awesome ideas and you tell me and I think, okay, how are we going to execute this? <laughs> and then you're off to the next awesome idea and then go from there. And usually I, I see execution as a, the execution piece. I see all of that fairly easily. Mm -hmm. You'll say... I don't see how this ties in with everything else. I don't see, hold on, stop, slow down. Okay. Explain, explain it to me. What do they call it? Explain as if I'm five, Elif, right? Explain it like I'm five, yeah. yeah are you are you suggesting that I'm the five-year-old in the relationship? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you will help me condense the thoughts into something that will be able to uh, be an, essentially, if we're in an elevator doing the elevator pitch, get on floor one, we're getting off at floor 10, whatever it might be. Does it still make sense by the time we get to floor 10? Yeah. And that sort of sounding board. And if it doesn't make sense, okay, maybe it's not without merit, but maybe it goes on the back burner while we look at other things. Yeah. Cool. Good question. Why don't you go again? Okay. Uh, sorry. Let's see here. Um, what's the most interesting piece of inside info you're allowed to share about government or military? <laughs> Who you asked this one? <laughs> I have no idea. There's four questions here. I don't, there's no name on the, any of them. Okay. Interesting piece about inside information that I'm not allowed to share. <laughs> that's a loaded question. <laughs> I know what I would say, but I, I, there's no way that's coming out of my mouth. Hmm. There's actually, there's a lot of good stuff, but there sorry, is. guys. <laughs> Tell you what, why don't I answer that one through upcoming videos in ways that I can put my head towards how I can answer this in a way that makes sense where I'm not burning things and I'm doing things in a productive way. Yeah. Because if you've got inside information on things, there's one reason for that. And that's based on trust. 
Yeah. Um, You're not going to get any more. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Do you want me to answer or ask another one? Or do I, you have one? I got one here from uh, Jeffrey Thor de Molin. French oh, name. French name. <laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> Uh, episode 18, The Science of Violence. So Jeffrey, super cool guy, local, uh, past Silver Corps student, uh, subject matter expert, GTD scientific forensic investigation. They predict human injury in any environment. And he was also on TV's Deadliest Warrior. So a lot of people have seen that one. I should have I led with that. You should have led with that yeah, one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, why didn't I lead with that? So he's talking about, uh, I think I'd like to know what you think about the sub 500 feet per second velocity kinetic projectile pistols for home defense in Canada. Since it's under 500 feet per second, it's not a firearm in Canada, but since the projectiles are 0.68 caliber, no weight is given. So I cannot calculate kinetic energy or kinetic energy density. Of course, Jeffrey, yes. (laughs) (laughs) But I plan to measure everything soon. Thoughts on these? Hokey or effective C-Link here? And it goes to Burna.ca, B-Y-R-N-A.ca. I'm getting this question a lot. Yeah, actually. Um, So does he have anything else? Okay, that's it. So a firearm that's regulated is 500 feet per second, I think it's 5.7 joules of energy that the projectile has to have. If it's underneath that, it could still be considered a firearm, just not a regulated firearm, which requires a license and training and background checks and all the rest that go with it. But you can still be charged with a firearm offense. Let's say you take a pellet gun, shoots less and it's lighter, less energy, and use it at your local liquor store to hold it up. And you're going to be charged with firearms offenses. So it brings these burner things. I haven't used them, but it looks like a paintball gun and it shoots pepper ball essentially. So pepper ball would be a prohibited specifically named thing in Canada. Consequently, you can have this paintball gun, you can have their training rounds, but you can't have their proprietary pepper balls to that go with it. And that's going to, and I guess it's a, they use a powder instead of liquid in there and they've got both an oleoresin capsicum as well as a, uh, uh, OC slash CN or CS proprietary kind of tear gas, um, uh, round as well. If I understand those things correctly, I've played with pepper bowl in the past, you know, pepper spray is as effective as it's carrying and it's, and, and how a person gets it. I remember as kids spraying each other just with stuff and. If you inhale it in your lungs, it feels like you're going to die. You get it in the face. Okay. Yeah, that burns, but you know, I can still function in the lungs. You're coughing up everything in the world. I don't think bringing a paintball gun to a gunfight's a good idea. I don't think having welts from a paintball is uh, an effective defensive tool here in Canada. Maybe the peppers might be a, an effective thing for, depending on how it disperses for, let's say predatory animal defense or just kind of keeping them at bay. But even that pepper spray is not going to deter a, um, predatory aggressive, uh, animal who's, uh, who's attacking you, but it'll get the one that's sort of just passively acquiescing and okay, you're, you're more trouble than it's worth. My opinion, I'd give it a big thumbs down. And the fact that it looks like a gun can land you into a position which might escalate a, a, a lethal force situation where it yeah. wouldn't happen before. There are far greater things, starting with basic situational awareness that I'd be uh, advocating for before a, uh, a paintball gun. It sounds like the intended use of that product isn't s- super legal anyway, right? Well, it was made in the States and, uh, from a defensive standpoint, you are allowed to defend yourself. And that's a funny thing too. Like with pepper spray, let's say you just had an OC, uh, spray. You can't buy that as something to be used as a defensive mechanism against people, but you can for bears and for, uh, for other four-legged predators. If you happen to use that on a person, I mean, then there's a whole legal thing that maybe Ian Ronkel could have opine on much better than myself, not being a legal expert, but that's, um, that's essentially my two bits on there. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Let's see here. Sorry, I've lost my spot. Uh, how do you balance raising kids in a digital age, but instilling the importance of the outdoors? I think we talked about that. Yeah. Who, who asked that one? 
no no name on these ones. Okay, done. <clears throat> if you had a name, I'd put some more insight into that. Yeah, sorry, no name. Uh, what's something you've never gotten used to while hunting or something that took time for you to overcome? Hmm. Why don't you answer that one? Because I think I already know your answer. My, yeah, my answer is going to be very different from yours. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so for any of you uh, that don't know, I did not grow up outdoors in the same way that Travis did. So um, as a, for example, story, Travis and I and uh, another person went on a hike one time into his family's cabin. Yeah. And Travis was being nice and let his friend lead us in there. Middle of the night. Middle of the night. And his friend got us lost. And it was one of the most terrifying nights of my life up to that point. Um, because the thought of sleeping outside with no tent, no idea where we, well, I had no idea where we are. Uh, and just getting in my sleeping bag. And I cinched that thing up over my head like that was going to protect me from any sort of animal attack or something. <laughs> But I, I was not comfortable outside. So that's, that's taken me some time. Um, and actually to tie in a past podcast guest, Nikki, and what she talked about, mm. um, I've, I've actually started doing something similar and man, that works like a hot damn. What's that? The, the sort of introduction to yourself, to the outdoors. Right. It's when she said it, I'm like, well, that sounds kind of silly. But then I started thinking about it. I'm like, no, that's a really good idea. Started doing it. I've noticed. And just so, just so people know what that means. Yeah. Sorry. I'm totally not explaining it. Um, you actually, you might be able to explain it better. So she was taught this and she thought it was hokey as well, uh, until she started doing it. She goes out and you're coming from a city environment and you go out to the outdoors and you say, hello forest. It's me, Travis. Right. And you introduce yourself and you go. And she says, all those little brown birds that start chirping you, all the little chipmunks that are chirping away, all the animals that are scurrying away, because you're bringing this energy in with you, which isn't congruent with the environment that you're currently in. And one step to helping you get on the same energy level as where you're moving to is to just introduce yourself, slow down, sit, observe, and you just start the animals start ignoring you. You just something extra in there that they don't see as a threat. Yeah. So I think that's what you're. Yeah. And I've started doing it when I go for a hike on my own, when we go hunting, like every single time, first thing I do when I get out there is I do that. And I've, it's a massive, massive difference in, in how I, like, I don't get nervous. I enjoy being outside so much more. I notice, like you said, with the animals, I just, so many more interactions with animals. I feel like I'm just part of the system instead of being a terrified observer. Isn't it funny how there's that <laughs> sort of crazy. mental wave link? People would say, well, that's a little hooey, that's a little hokey. Yeah. It's a reason why the Silver Core podcast expands past just the the how-to, but we talk about these sort of things. You know, it might, might not be for everybody, but, um, but I think there's something to it. Yeah. Um, so the thing that I've never gotten used to while hunting, I don't know. I don't know what I'd say about never gotten used to. Actually, I'm, I'm surprised how used to so much of the process of all, all the little steps of hunting that's, it's just, man, it's just clicked. Yeah. I love it. I like... The whole process. I love it. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know how to answer that question because there's nothing that I can think of that I've never gotten used to. Um, the cold maybe in the mornings. That even, kind of Even that. <laughs> I, I, I just, still struggle. I, I just know that's part of the process, yeah. right? And I'm used to it and I know it ahead of time and I just, I enjoy it. I mean, that's, that's that type two fun. I might right. not enjoy it in the moment, but you know it's temporary. Yeah. You're better than me though at getting up in the morning. Remember that. That's going to be a sound clip. We'll just take that getting in the morning part we'll out. We'll get it framed. Yes. We'll get it uh, put on a pillow. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, That's Nick, the end of my question. So the rest are with you. Nick Bichinick, episode 61, Mercenaries and Augmented Reality. So Nick, cool guy. He's an entrepreneur. He's always... So I met him and Dominica on a course that I was teaching out in Vancouver many, many years ago. And I thought, holy crow, who are these people, right? They're, 
Dominica, she's got an energy level to her that's uh, that's really unique. That's really cool. It's contagious. And uh, uh, Nick, the thing that's things he was talking about, hel- helicopter pilot, who's uh, um, just th- his schooling, his military career, his uh, the different things he's interested in. He says uh, at the end of this basic safety course, like twenty something years ago, he says. Uh, is there any more advanced courses I can take? I'm, I'm really interested in this. And I jokingly said, oh, you know, there's a zero to hero mercenary course you can take out. I think the shooting edge is hosting it. They got a group coming in and they're, uh, uh, it's one week shows you how to use a gun and then people can apply to work as a private military contractor overseas. Right. And oh, okay. So he calls them up and says, Hey, can I come for free if I bring a film crew with me? Like, does he do filming? Not really, but he's, said, why not? (laughs) Right. I will, I'll do it. So then that took him through that chorus. That was kind of neat. Then next thing you know, he's over in, uh, Sierra Leone. He's over in areas of Europe. He's talking with, um, uh, Blackwater and he puts out a movie called Shadow Company. You can watch it. It's online. It's fantastic. Yeah. He's got Gerard Butler doing the narration because he's, I think Gerard Butler owed him a favor. They know each other (laughs) from somewhere. It's just interesting fellow. Anyways, uh, his question. Um, congratulations. If you don't think it'll get too political, I'd like to ask something like. Ask political question here. Thank you. And people will notice I tend to stay away from the politics more or less in this podcast, unless I can find a positive way to speak about it. Um, Travis, you're an entrepreneur, a responsible gun owner, and I have a ton of experience teaching firearm safety. What would you advise the U S government to address, uh, do to address the repeating cycle of gun violence? in schools. Wow. So that is a uh, podcast into itself. And that's a question that'll never be answered really, because there's just too many different facets to it. However, when we talked earlier about hunting and firearms and what's a misconception and how people will make that gun, the object of their intent, I think the same thing applies here. I think when we talk about gun violence, we're talking about violence. The fact that they use the word gun violence as a way to be able to statistically track something and create policy around or create more policy around, if they want to call it knife violence or car violence or jerry can violence, gas violence, right? Um, I think most people can come to terms with the fact that if you remove that object that you're looking at. Completely. Let's say we remove guns completely from the picture. Guns aren't available. Have we solved the problem? I'd say the answer is no. There's a reason why the problem is happening anyways. The firearm just happens to be something that has a fairly high rate of lethality associated with it. And it's got a very emotional connection. And that connection is built through media, whether we watch movies and people glorify the gun or demonize a gun is built through, um, news cycles. Cause that's, we know this is something that's going to be, uh, uh, getting people's attention. Um, if we remove that gun completely, have we addressed a problem? No. And I think addressing whatever that root cause might be is an important factor. I personally don't believe that everybody has a God given right to own a firearm, because some people might be just terrible at life. The best predictor of future performance is past performance. And if they have a past performance history of not being a responsible individual, of having violence issues, mental health issues, what have you, I think there should be checks and balances in there. And I think there should be a conversation that's had and accepted and being able to, uh, to work further towards whatever that root cause might be. And if that be in schools, quick and easy being able to call things out and say, look, it looks like you're having problems. Let's address it. Let's have a process to be able to take you through. Um, there's a, uh, a Dr. Bruce Alexander. He's, I think he's in North Vancouver. Uh, I'd like to have him. On, guy? Yeah. I'd like to have him on the podcast <clears throat> at some point. I haven't reached out to him, but he popularizes theory and it was to do with drugs and they would take a rat and they'd put it into a cage and they give them two water bottles, one with water, one with laced with opiates or some other narcotic. And they find that this rat by and large over and over again would choose the drug laced water over the regular water 
become addicted and die. And they use that as a means to say, look at how bad drugs are. And this Bruce Alexander guy says, well, hold on a second. How would you act if you're put into a cage and you had access to nothing and all you're given these two water bottles? What a depressing life you would have. What do you have to live for? Like, why wouldn't you want to overstimulate yourself in these different ways that would eventually lead to this negative outcome? What if we made a rat park? What if we gave them all other rats to play with and toys and food and all this stuff that they can have in this great park? And he found that by and large, the rats avoided the drug-laced water and they went to the normal water bottle. Some apparently, in his words, would still like to party, but they, <laughs> they wouldn't <laughs> abuse it to the point of death. Yeah. Now, the repeatability of his studies uh, has, from what I understand, come into question because it's not a hundred percent and all the rest. But what he did do is he opened up the conversation about harm reduction yeah. and he really helped drive that one home. Why are we looking at demonizing? They say, let's get rid of all the drugs and we That's won't have weird. drugs anymore. <laughs> That's weird. Right. We'll throw them in jail. Well, you know, the easiest place for these guys to get drugs was in jail. Mm. So if that's not working, if what we've done in the past hasn't, has led us to where we are now, what's to make us think that doubling down on that is going to make it better? Blaming the guns is easy, right? I, I think, I, I think the States is, is winning at like a lot of stuff, but I think they really need to take a good hard look at a lot of things within their, their culture and. And their, you know, their systems of education and, and it's just, it's a hot mess. It's so bad. And without looking at all those things and looking at why families are falling apart and why their education system is so terrible and, and why people feel like they don't have any other option than, than to take a firearm out and shoot a bunch of people, I think, unless they address those root issues, it, it just, I mean, how do you explain how a kid does goes out and kills a bunch of their peers, right? That's, that's not an easy question. You know, uh, Dave Grossman, past podcast guest, he wrote the book on killing, on combat, on hunting is another one. And he points to the disassociation between, uh, how death has become a closed door activity. Yeah. And where it used to be, people would see the animals and they understood the circle of life. That's all behind closed doors open caskets and the rest tend to be cremations and behind closed doors. And there's a disassociation and he's a, a learned individual, although some of his thoughts have come under, um, criticism as well. I, I think he raises some very valid points, but I would say, you know, mother Teresa, not often quoted, but says, if you want to change the world, <laughs> go home and love your family. And I think that core value is something that creates community, mm -hmm. which helps mitigate the end result. Like I, there is no ultimate answer here. And Nick, yeah, this is kind of a, uh, it's a, and it's an excellent question. And I'd love to talk with you about this on the podcast because you're damn smart. So <laughs> I'd love to hear, hear your, uh, your take on it. Shall we move on? Sure. Okay. You've got no more? I don't have any more, no. I thought you had one from Dave Kataris in there. I, uh, oh, maybe I do. Yeah. I thought these, oh yeah, sorry. I think, I think some are, some of these are repeated. So let me just double check. Yeah, sorry. I have a bunch more questions. Um, some of these are done. Hey Dave, you're coming up apparently. Oh yeah. Dave Kataris. Uh, Talk about how to find answers for new PAL holders, like what programs or classes are available, where to go to find answers. New people are so confused about what to do, and most of the time they make the wrong decision because they listen to their 80-year-old uncle for advice. <laughs> there's a bunch of there's a bunch of questions in here. Does he have a, well, should we address them individually? Um, well, maybe just, yeah, start with how to find answers for new PAL holders. Silvercore.ca. Yeah, call Lisa. Yeah, there you go. Uh, that's, that's an easy one. I mean, then they got the firearms program, yeah. um, but, but the, but the questions are going to change, uh, club members, Silver Court Club. That's what yeah. it's all about. Phone yeah. us up. If we don't have the answer, I'm sure we will 
be able to put you in touch with an expert who does. And we have a fantastic, incredibly detailed and valuable blog through the website <laughs> that has so much information, YouTube videos that have a bunch of stuff. If you have ideas on things that you just don't know, or if there's things that you and your friends did your pal and you want to know something, let us know and we can do a new blog or yeah. do a video and yeah. But that's one of the huge benefits of the Silver Core Club. A lot of people take advantage of that. It's just at your fingertips. People would mm -hmm. say, oh, I'm looking for a lawyer. Do you know one that's a firearms lawyer, right? Yeah, actually we do know some, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm looking for, I want to get into this sport. Who would I talk to? Well, that's easy. Go over here. Yeah. We've dealt with them. They've been good. So yeah. I, yeah. I, I got this legal question. Okay, go talk to a lawyer, firearms program. We can tell you what we've known and seen as a, um, a general consensus, but we can't give legal advice. That's one caveat. Typical. Typically, the legal advice questions that come into the office, we're not able to do a whole heck of a lot for, but. I can tell you what the general consensus is, but we can't give. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see what else from Dave. Dave has a couple more. Um, can you do more personal stories about your trips? Share more poems like you did on the last podcast. That was cool. <laughs> I play the part about the podcast over and over again. So personal parts about trips? Absolutely. That's one thing that I've noticed, and I think we've uh, already shared one story without looking to get, get getting too late on this one, about the uh, on a bear hunt about the grizzly bear. That was a good learning experience too. Um, but that's one thing I realized was it took me a while, anyways. <laughs> the audience and the guests, number one, audience and guests. What value are they bringing? How can we bring that out? How can I bring value to the guest? Well, there is a staple in all of these, and that's me, and. I do come from a very, I guess, shy personality type, more introverted, not wanting to share personal details or personal things. And I realize that's one part that has been lacking. And I have moving forward in the next hundred episodes, we'll be sharing select things within my comfort, pu pushing <laughs> my comfort zone, always knowing that, you know, if it brings value, if I feel that there's going to be something in there that brings value. And that's it. Yeah. They're, you're not showing pictures from our family vacations and stuff like that, but. Yeah. Let's get out the carousel. Yeah, totally. So you asked about poems? Uh, yeah. He asked about a poem. He wants you to read a poem. Okay. This one's dedicated to you, Dave. This is for you, Dave. So <laughs> some poems I have memorized and I have a number. Um, this one I don't. So I'll read it for you, Dave. Okay. It's called Roll the Dice by Charles Bukowski. If you're going to try, go all the way. Otherwise, don't even start. If you're going to try, go all the way. This could mean losing girlfriends, wives, relatives, jobs, and maybe your mind. Go all the way. It could mean not eating for three or four days. It could mean freezing on a park bench. It could mean jail. It could mean derision, mockery, isolation. Isolation is the gift. All the others are a test of your endurance, of how much you really want to do it. And you'll do it despite rejection and the worst odds. And it'll be better than anything else you can imagine. If you're going to try, go all the way. There is no other feeling like that. You'll be alone with the gods and the nights will flame with fire. Do it. Do it. Do it. All the way. All the way. You'll ride life straight to perfect laughter. It's the only good fight there is. There you go, Dave. There's a nice. poem. <laughs> Um, do you want one more from Dave? Yeah. Then we've covered the, uh, Dave ones. Yep. Yeah. Okay. This is my favorite question of the whole, all of them, the entire podcast. It's not even a question. It's just a statement from Dave. <laughs> do an interview with your wife. That'd be super cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, Dave. <clears throat> there you go, Dave. This one's for you. Yeah. Love it. Thanks for those. <laughs> okay. Do you have any more? I do. I'm just kind of moving them out of order here a little bit. Okay. We have Trevor Public Over, episode 90, ATI, Tangent Theta, SAI, Tenebrex, the Rolls Royce of Rifle Scopes is the episode name. And he That's says- Super cool dude. Yeah. Amazing guy. Yeah. Honestly, the whole group over there is amazing. I love them. Yeah. Flew over there from Vancouver- over to Nova Scotia, not knowing what to expect when I got over there, met this awesome guy, um, 
smart, insightful, picked me up at the airport. Wasn't expecting that. I figured I'd be taking a, a cab or something. Go out for dinner, get the full tour of the, uh, the facilities, meet all the people that work there. I mean, it's like a family. That, that whole place, everybody that works there, you can tell, genuinely cares. Mm -hmm. And head out to the reins, did some shooting, tried out some of the products. Uh, I can say, without a question of the doubt, they make phenomenal, phenomenal <laughs> rifle scopes. And uh, that's backed up not just by my own anecdotal uh, experience, but Ilya Koshkin, past podcast guest, the Dark Lord of Optics and his observations, being able to quantifiably measure these scopes based on other, all the other top tier ones. Anyways, uh, Trevor says, um, hey, Silvercore, congrats on hitting hundred shows. Your commitment to providing high quality information and training on such a wide variety of topics is invaluable. Keep up the great work. We look forward to the next 100 shows. Question. Do you have any special plans or celebrations in mind for your 100th episode? And how do you plan to mark this milestone? In addition, any plans for Silvercore to expand and open the East Coast Division? <laughs> well, yes, yes, and yes, I guess would be the, uh, the answers to those, Trevor. Uh, special, special plans for celebrations. That's one thing I've always been poor at. I think we've yeah. both been poor at that, eh, Tiff? Yeah. Is we'll work really hard, we'll set our our sights on a goal and we, even before reaching that goal, once we know it's in sight and we're getting there, we've got another goal yeah. and we're looking at the next one and the next one and the ability to stop, regroup and celebrate those wins is intrinsically important, I think, to one's mental well-being and psyche. Yeah. So we'll be celebrating this with the family. We're going to be celebrating it with the staff and there's also, you know, there's going to be a little bit of a giveaway of uh, a pretty damn good scope. So I figure this is a good place to interject that one for everyone who's been listening from the beginning here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I would say follow the social media because the social team is going to have all the details on that one sorted out, but it's going to involve, going to have to follow ATI. That's Armament Tech. So make sure there's a follow for them, a follow for Silvercore in order for us to be able to track that, use the hashtag Silvercore Podcast 100. So uh, Silvercore Podcast 100, and we'll be able to track that one. I think that's a pretty good way to help celebrate the um, 100th episode. Yep, I think so. And, and Lobster Fest. I, I think a Lobster <laughs> Fest is in order. <laughs> so when we went over there, I was like, man, you know, I'm in Nova Scotia. I'm going to have to have lobster, right? You can't go to Nova Scotia and not have lobster in a so had some, and I was uh, reassured that that was, although I thought it was fantastic, that's a, a very poor showing for what lobster is in Nova Scotia. They said, come on back in June, we'll show you a proper lobster. Yep. So we're going to do that. Going to have to do that one. And, uh, as for expanding and open in the East coast division, um, I'd say watch the, uh, the uh, launch of what we're doing here. Hopefully it's coinciding with this episode here, but you're going to see uh, what that's looking like. Trevor, thank you so much. Amazing fellow. Uh, love the, love the question here. Okay. Uh, we're almost done with questions actually. Um, next one is from Agron and I'm sorry, Agron. Uh, it's Agron. See, I can't, I didn't it's Agron Baraktori. Come on. How yeah. hard is that? I was going to say, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I know you can do it, so I should have let you do this question. Sorry, Algron. Uh, where do you see the podcast going? Staying true to the Silver Core culture or exploring other ideas? I'd say both. I think exploring the Silver Core culture is exploring other ideas. Exploring other ideas is staying true to the Silver Core culture. Yeah. 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 So I think we kind of touch on that a bit through this, but yeah, mm -hmm. we're going to be uh, uh, expanding the podcast always with that hook back. It's going to be positive, value to the guest, value yeah. to the audience. So, uh, uh, Linda Miller, Keith Cunningham and Lieutenant Colonel David Grossman, cause he's American. It's not a Lieutenant. There's a silver Corps podcast number 98. They all got together. They wrote the book on hunting. Fantastic book. Highly recommend. It's on Amazon. You can download the thing. They've got an audible version, which is really cool. Cause it's got all of them talking into it. Actually, we recorded the podcast shortly after they wrapped up doing the 
the all the audio for that. And that was uh, probably the most finagling we've had to do on a podcast because <laughs> everyone had to be in separate rooms on separate computers. And it was, uh, it was a little bit of work, but we got there. It worked out well. And, uh, you know, Linda says, uh, there's a couple things I'd mention. At the SCI convention, we talked to a fellow from the First Hunt Foundation and he suggested that all the mentors he has in the network should read on hunting. I'd agree. And that was probably Razzle Dazzle Rick Brazzle. Probably. Uh, who's also a past podcast guest. Says, he also mentioned that he had been talking to you about setting up some Canadian mentors. Your thoughts? I would say, I would think that Rick is correct on that yeah. one. Um, stay tuned and watch. Uh, you recently went on your first out of country hunt and I'm curious whether any of the on hunting echoed with you during that hunt. And yeah, absolutely did. Yeah, totally. You know, different cultures, different, even though it's not that different of a culture, they, in the middle of the Pacific and, uh, different hunting styles, but the core ethos that speaks to what a hunter is resonated and that's so aptly, um, and properly wrapped up in the on hunting book. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And Rick Brazel, First Hunt Foundation. Guys, if you haven't checked out First Hunt Foundation, I'd say check it out. It's a pretty cool organization. Uh, they're growing like wildfire. They've got over a thousand volunteer mentors operating in 43 U.S. states. And uh, they've got their uh, Connecting Heroes and Hunters, Veterans and First Responders. Share the Heritage, H-E-R is capitalized, Girls and Women, Forgotten Rights, People of Color, programs that are all growing. And uh, they've got a huge grant from the NRA, Hunters Leadership Forum is developing the first of its kind online hunting mentoring course. Let's see, where's the next page? Uh, The ABCs of Outdoor Mentoring will be free for anyone interested in learning to be a better mentor. Cool. So guys, check that one out. Guys and gals. Are you out on yours? I'm done. Yeah. Okay. I got a few more. We'll, we'll run on through them. I got one here that you can read off. Uh, Matt Mendel, episode 59, wand stalls. So Matt, if you want, if you really want to get a chuckle, just follow Matt on social media or follow wand yeah. stalls. I mean, honestly, I, I know Matt's a big, uh, brainchild behind a lot of their commercials and stuff, but they're hilarious. Yeah, if you're looking through uh, the YouTube thumbnails, he's a guy holding two flamethrowers. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. everybody that looks at that, they're like, is that, are those flamethrowers? And you're like, yeah, yeah, that's it. And he's mm-hmm. the, uh, if you ever watch you know, NWES, National, National Weapons Enforcement Team here in Canada, Division of the RCMP, they do some training with businesses and they've teamed up with a CSAAA and they're doing uh, training on, for example, how to find a straw purchaser. And so they got some videos set up and Matt is the infamous uh, bad guy, <laughs> the straw purchaser, the background, <laughs> directing the person to buy guns for him on, in their videos. Uh, how does Silvercore see the hunting slash sustainability community changing in the next hundred episodes and how will Silvercore maintain its positive message in an ever changing political, social landscape? So the, the hunting community, it's ever diversifying. I mean, just what we're talking about there with Rick Brazel and first hunt foundation. Um, I think everyone recognizes this isn't a bunch of gouts, grumpy old white dudes. I mean, things are changing and the ability to accept people in is, um, everybody sees it. I I heard it said before, like a person will go out to a hunting location. I I think it was Mark that said it actually. Mm -hmm go to a hunting location and he's like, ah, oh, damn it, this is my favorite spot and there's somebody else here. He's yeah. like, or you could say, awesome, there's other hunters out here. This is great, right? There's my fellow fellow kind out here. Yeah. I'll have a chat with them. We'll talk about different areas. Maybe we can learn about things and I'll hunt this area, they'll hunt that area. Mm-hmm. It's all a perception, right? And I think yeah. that's the biggest thing that people are uh, learning and now it's changing. New people are getting into hunting, might not hunt the way that you do but they're hunting. Yeah. And if you invite them into the community, they can learn the social norms associated with it. And you just might learn something as well too. Yeah. I think the second part of the question too is how do we stay positive in an ever-changing climate? It's simple. It's like change isn't a bad thing. Change is good. Yeah. Change is exciting. Yeah. And, and, 
and if it is, you do see negativity out there and people are you feeling challenged or having a hard time, then it's just such an awesome opportunity for us to be, to be an outlet of positivity. Yeah. Listen to the Johnston I podcast at, mm -hmm. um, at the expansive, listen to his podcast, right? Yeah. And listen to, um, the one we did together talking about aliens and. And that was crazy timing. I just have to say like, for people that don't realize that was recorded prior to aliens being like just a common thing that everyone's <laughs> like, oh yeah, there's aliens. Just, I don't know. Might as well just let you know this now. Yeah. Adaptability and change is yeah. very, very important. Don't be fearful of change and things that are coming. Embrace a change and be like what Sh Shane Mahoney says. If that river is going down and you can jump on something in that changing river, see how you can steer it. I mean, that's, that's exciting. Yeah. That's what keeps things interesting because you have the... I, th I think that's the biggest thing that, uh, people are learning is that they have personal agency. They can mm -hmm. control things. They don't have to be behind their cell phone recording. If something's going off, they can change things. They don't have to wait for the government to do something. They, at the individual level, have the ability to make massive changes. And those changes can be done in a way that's beneficial to them yeah. and their community. Totally. Um, Casey Braum, episode 88, curious case of the meat eater gnome. So Casey is a super talented artist, just all around good guy. It's very, very seldom when I meet somebody and I have to look up to, I'm yeah, six foot six. He's taller than you, isn't he's he? He's taller than me. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. It, and just, you know, like, like most big guys, just heart of gold. Mm -hmm. I say that cause I'm a big guy. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. <laughs> just, just generally <laughs> like awesome. Like every tall guy with a beard, he's just awesome. Just generally awesome. <laughs> And it's funny because it was Brian Niska talking about this community who says, there's this guy, Casey, you got to see his pictures. You got to see these paintings. You got to see how talented he is. He's got this ab ability to draw an animal and it's got the sense of movement in it on a still object. And oh yeah, by the way, he, um, he made the gnome for meat eater yeah. and that was all of their shirts and hats and, and, um, anyway, so Casey says, okay. So here's a question. You've, po you've hosted a hundred podcasts now and you've talked to as many interesting and often influential people in the silver core wheelhouse. So one, what are the top influential things that you've heard in those interviews that have motiv motivated you into action and or change in how you go about your life? Maybe you could give some examples and even invite listeners to do the same. Well, I don't see two. So, <laughs> um, that's a fantastic question by the way, Casey, uh, what would you say, Tiff? What have I learned that's changed me or what would I have? I, I mean, like I mentioned before, the, the Nikki thing going into the woods, yeah. hearing her say that, that, that's, that's definitely had an effect on me. Um, I don't know. There's, there's been so many, like the positivity in a lot of the people has been good. You know, sometimes I have a bad day and I'll like listen to people talk about awesome stuff and it just kind of, it's a good break. Yeah. I, I think the, um, just that stupid, I talked to one of the podcasts in the, before when I was a teenager, I, I said, you know, a real good design for a t-shirt when everyone's talking about no fear <laughs> and they were taking off these no fear t-shirts. I was like, what about know your limits? But instead of K-N-O-W, it was N-O, like you, you don't have limits, you're limitless. And that is one thing that comes over again and again through the guests. I mean, Sonny, yeah, I think I want to be a professional bare knuckle boxer. And he just does it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I think I want to um, make an invisible cloak. And he does it. Uh, Casey, yeah, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm liking this meteor thing. Um, I want to make their gnome. He just reaches out. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was in grade 11, I think it was, I had a book report. It was, uh, Mr. Latimer was the English teacher and he was so passionate about this book called Shoeless Joe and the movie Field of Dreams with Kevin Costner was based on that book. And, uh, he would bring in baseball bats and gloves and it was like a very romantic thing for him and the smell of the gloves and like, he would just get right into this thing. And I was never one to follow the, the normal path. And, uh, we Nor had a- Nor were you a big baseball fan. Nor was I ever a big baseball <laughs> fan. Yeah, I like the movie. Um, but our book report's coming up. It's due and I haven't got anything done. I don't even think I'd read the book. Sounds like typical Travis in school. <laughs> <laughs> and 
I thought, well, I got to get a book report. There's no chat GPT. We don't have internet to get things done, right? I'll just call the author up. And so I found the author. I went through the white pages because I had heard that the author had lived in, um, uh, I think it was uh, Hope or something was supposed to have lived, but I uh, found him, got a number. Turned out it was, I think it was South Surrey at the time. And the number had an answering machine. Answering machine went to... I uh, left a number in Florida for emergencies. So I phoned it up because this is an emergency, right? <laughs> Obviously. Got a book report due. Yeah. I call up and I talk to, was it W.P. Kinsella, I yeah. believe is the uh, author of that one. And uh, he's in Florida. Sounds like he's on the beach or at least that's what's going through my grade 10 head, right? And he's got some uh, person he's with. She's asking, what are you doing? He's like, this is a book report. Somebody's <laughs> phoning me up, right? <laughs> and I, I aced that book report. Um, and... Uh, teacher thought I was trying to, in his words, fly one over and left field on him. <laughs> but, uh, uh, finally was able to convince him otherwise, but that whole idea that nothing is impossible, just go out and do it. Uh, you set your sights to it. And if you're able to bring others with you, will you do that? And that's something that Seb has recently talked about on a recent podcast. And I've felt very strongly about that. If I I'm in a position of advantage, or if I can see things from my perspective that others can't, I will do whatever I can to bring those right people over so they can see it as well. Mm -hmm. Cause guess what? They're going to travel further at some point. They're going to look back and they're going to invite other people to do the same. And it's just going to benefit us all. Yeah. So I, I think that is the, uh, it, it's not an individual thing. It's more of a cumulative thing that I've noticed that is, uh, coming in the last hundred episodes. Like Rat Park. Like Rat Park. Yeah. Uh, the, the opioids. So maybe you could uh, give some examples and even invite listeners to do the same. I'll put the challenge out there. Mm -hmm. Anybody out there listening to this, if you made it this far into the podcast, <laughs> if you could write down what it is, anything from the past hundred episodes that has spoken to you, that has helped you, that has uh, changed the way you've lived, looked at things or uh, benefited you in any possible way. Put that onto the Silver Core social media and we'll make sure to highlight that. Cool. Speaking of that one, I do know that one came in on one of my sheets here, which I've wrote a line beside that said Tiffany on it. So we'll see if I can find that. There it is. Patrick Grundle. Oh, okay. It's the longest one. Uh, to Travis and the Silver Core team, first, congratulations on your 100th episode. I've been an avid listener since hearing the first episode. In my opinion, the best title was episode three, <laughs> The Man Who Refused to Wear Pants. I know Doc, and that is always a memorable sight to behold. And it's an accurate description of him, too. Yep. Uh, very impressed how you've covered such a wide range of topics that keep people engaged. In fact, several guests have motivated myself to improve the person I am and want to be. In addition, in an indirect way, your podcast and its awesome guests also assisted my son, currently a Reg 4 CAF member serving in Latvia, one RCHA, with him and his journey forward. As a father, I thank you. One question, how do you see the podcast future unfold? Do you have a long-term plan in mind, or will the guests and episodes evolve in an organic way to reach out to additional listeners covering vast topics? Keep up the great work, and really looking forward to what the future holds. Patrick Grendel. So, in... Patrick re recently reached out and uh, got a message there at nighttime and uh, looking for, he says, L love to touch base and chat with you and want to make sure everything's okay. Things are okay. So great. Busy at the moment. Let's chat tomorrow. And, you know, oftentimes the head goes to like, what does a person want? What did he want? He wanted to say thank you. And that was like massive because I just... You don't hear these things all the time. And, uh, he mentioned something similar to that, which harkens back to the last question as well. If we're able to help make a change in other people, like that's, that's awesome. I, um, thank you, Patrick. I appreciate that. But more specifically to your question, uh, do I see it, uh, developing organically as it, as it moves forward? There's going to be definitely an organic nature to it. Um, I found a long time ago not to force things. And even in the early podcasts, like somebody would know, be known for one thing and I would be talking to them about that one thing only to find that they just don't have the same level of passion or enthusiasm for that one thing 
at that one time mm-hmm. and to learn to change gears quickly. In fact, you know, Brad Brooks of our galley and he's got a, uh, he makes high end outdoor equipment, super lightweight. He's avid mountaineer, rock climber, hunter, all around really cool dude. And, uh, uh, before we start the podcast and I had all these different questions of like, what do I think people want? And you know, the silver girl podcast audience had had some stuff and he says, you know, man, uh, just, just before we get going here, I just want to say, we can talk about whatever you want, but if we have to do like a boring podcast where we talk about kit and gear and all of these things, I mean, I, we, we could do that if you want, but uh, I'd rather tell stories. I'd rather get into the adventure of it. I'd rather really just delve into the, uh, uh, the personal side and the, um, the storytelling that surrounds it. And I like, oh yeah. Throw away all your questions. Totally. All my notes (laughs) gone. Right. And, uh. And I love that podcast. Yeah. That's that's one of my favorite ones. Yeah. Because you guys just talk like buddies. Totally. And so, uh, knowing how to, to change, having that organic approach, I think is very, very important. Mm. And every podcast I do, I'll prepare for. Most every podcast I do, I never have to look at my notes yeah. because once a conversation starts, all those notes that I had, we're on a completely different track now. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we'll follow that track and it's always been an organic process. And I found that tends to bring the best value. And, you know, there, there could be times when, uh, um, no, I'm going to save that one. I, I won't, I won't go down that one. That'll be a surprise. Okay. Uh, we've got one here from, here we go. Oh, you need those. I'll take those. Okay. You got this. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, Gray Man Dad uh, says, given the current economic climate, pending legislation, and as a business owner and someone who's made a career in the firearms industry, what do you see as an untapped opportunity for the future generation of firearms enthusi- enthusiasts who want to not only make a difference, but like yourself, make a business or career in the industry? Untapped opportunity? Yep. They're everywhere. There, there's yeah. so many untapped opportunities. The, the worst thing that I think somebody can do if they're trying to make a business or career in something is follow what everybody else has done. Then you've got a job, yeah. right? It's and like, how fun is that? Right. It's like, okay, well, I want to open up a 7-Eleven. Well, there's a template in place. You can follow the process, but you're, you're working a job, yeah. right? I, I wouldn't look at that as, and it's an important thing to do. It's important that we have these 7-Elevens, but from my personal standpoint, you just take a look at where all the um, uh, unfulfilled areas are. Mm-hmm. And don't ask other people. Don't be like, oh, what is what do people want to see? What do you want it? Because you're going to be getting the wrong kind of information back. Find something that you ask of yourself that you're passionate about. Because if everybody says they want one thing and you work towards that, but that's not your passion, the person who's passionate about that will outperform you totally. every single day of the week. People love to tell you that you're going to fail <laughs> or something stupid or it's not a good idea. It's so easy. When you tell me, oh, I have this great idea, blah, blah, blah. It's so easy for me to just be like, ah, that's not going to work. That's no, not going to work. And it's hard to, to come up with the ideas and push through. So don't, li- like you said, don't listen to people when they're like, no, that's not going to work. It hasn't been done yet. Right. Right. Everyone, everybody, it's like you say, it's easy to say no. Yeah. And I think that comes from a standpoint of fear. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe, maybe a more negative standpoint as well, right? I don't want to see everybody else around. I don't want to be down here while everybody else around me is going up here. I don't want to put that effort or work in. I can see that it's not possible. I'll tell you, know your limits, right? Everything is possible. You might turn around at the end of it and say, I've achieved it. Now, if I put that same level, level of effort into some other job, I would have been way further ahead, right? Perhaps. Yeah. But for untapped markets, I mean... From a business standpoint, it doesn't matter what legislation comes through when it happens with firearms, there's always a way to make money. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that's always sat at sort of a weird odds with me with Silvercore, because I have a very personal idea as to what I think should be happening with firearms. And that always wins out over my business aspirations. Mm -hmm. Like for example, um, the Silvercore 
gun club, as it has been known for the longest time, the Silver Court Club, it was born out of the desire to limit hurdles that were being put in place by the firearms program and to allow people to meet the legal requirements so they could still have restricted firearms and go to the range and do what they do and then hopefully join a range after they've had a chance to go through all of this. And it's just one, one of the levels in, in the process here. When Daniel Bolofsky, Silver Corps Club member, says, Travis, I'm having an issue in, in Ontario here and, um, and I, I think I'm going to end up taking these guys to court because they're not recognizing and they're not issuing ATTs, they're not re- issuing RPLs. I did everything I could in my power to assist Daniel on that court case, of which the uh, ultimate outcome of all of that was Ontario is one of the provinces that no longer is the only province that no longer requires you as a mandatory policy measure within the program to belong to a gun club or a range to get your restricted firearms license or your ATT. And I feel very strongly about that. Now, from a growing a club standpoint, that's completely contrary, but from (laughs) what do I think is right for the people, if I could... Replicate that in every province and territory, fantastic, because I've never, ever wanted the value proposition of the club to be a policy requirement for the, uh, for the RCMP. Totally. There has to be a greater value above that, and it has to be a value of community, of education, of mentorship, of access, of insurance, of uh, all of these different things. Discounts. <laughs> Discounts, yeah, and yeah, just bringing the community that. together, right? <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, other untapped, I mean, people say, oh, they're talking about having a central repository for firearms, right? Which is talked time and time again. From a business standpoint, man, you can make a lot of money doing that. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you can still use that to meet requirements, but put things back essentially to where they were before. And I can expand on that in a later episode. I mean, there's lots of times you can meet all the legal requirements in a business way in a way that an individual wouldn't be able to do it and restore the same rights that people enjoyed before, whether they want to call it a workaround or, or what have you. It's just, it's not a workaround. It's working with the system that's in place, but thinking creatively. Mm-hmm. Um, so yes, there are, there are lots of untapped markets. Yeah, totally. And, and, and there's going to be more. And the fact that it's changing constantly, just mm-hmm. <laughs> it's more and more and more. But I think for anybody looking at business, the biggest thing that they can be looking for is uh, working as a community in the business industry, because the short-sighted monetary gain is not play, does not play into the macro picture. If you start looking at things as 10, 20 years sort of uh, endeavors, all of a sudden your decision-making process changes from if you're looking at it day by day, month by month, year by year. How can I make as much money as I can right now before the new, yeah. new law comes into place? And all you end up doing is alienating those within the community, reinforcing negative stereotypes, and you're, you're basically choking it off. And we see that time and time again, and it, it's a short, it's a short game and it doesn't play out to everyone's benefit. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, let's see. I got one from Zachary Hansen, episode 94, Turning Feral. That's a book he wrote. Uh, pretty cool dude. In fact, um, we've registered for a trapping course based on his recommendation of how much trapping has assisted him in being a hunter. What's been the most unexpected outcome or learning you've had, to a- you've had after doing 100 episodes? Is it a specific piece of information, a way of looking at things, a specific inspirational guest looking forward to the next 100. You know, I, I think this question has been asked uh, a couple of uh, different ways and I, and I just can't think of one individual specific thing, but I can think of the, the accumulation of the guests and how they build off of each other. Cause some of our guests will come on and they'll listen to past episodes so they can have a little bit of a flavor and they'll end up building off of things that they've said as well. Mm-hmm. Like Daniel Fritter, Man, that guy's sharp. He's a sharp cookie. He's uh, from Caliber Magazine. And some of the ideas that uh, that he comes up with that are inspirational at a grassroots level for the uh, the Canadian firearms community. Ian Runkle, who we've talked about on here as well, and he's 
brings in different ways to, uh, to look at things. And mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to, and if we talk about inside information, some of the things that he's looking at doing into the future, yeah. because, uh, I think it'll benefit everybody in the community. Totally. Um, I like Daniel's points because he advocates for personal accountability, accountability and like stop passing the buck. Mm-hmm. Firearms community, you guys have got to get off your butts and make things happen yourself and stop looking for others to solve your problems. And I really like that because I think it it mirrors what we want to do with Silver Core is get people to take accountability over their own lives and learn new things and become confident and want to get outside and do interesting things. And yeah, I like it. I do too. Do you have any more? Yeah, I think there's one more. I think it's half of a question from before. I think it's from Greg. Uh, from one dad to another, but also as someone who is a role model for many in the firearms and hunting community, what is one dad advice talk uh, do you wish someone had with you? And in celebration of your 100th episode, what is the message you want to give to not only listeners, but all Canadians? I think that was Dre. Was it? Because the pages got mixed up here. Okay. So uh, dad advice talk I wish I got. Uh, really wouldn't matter because I don't know if I'd listen, honestly. Yeah. I mean, you don't really grow a brain till you're about 28. <laughs> I think that's when they say when brains fully mature. I was always the type of person and someone would say that stove is hot. I'm like, huh, I wonder what they mean by hot. Like how hot? Yeah. Like really, really hot? Like I bet you if I touch it quickly, I won't get burned. Yeah, no. And, and I'm dad, still kind of Yeah, like no, you, you haven't changed a whole lot. So I, I don't think there's any specific piece of dad advice that I wish I got because I don't know if it would... It would have made a heck of a difference. What's the, what's the other part of the question? Uh, the second part is, sorry, uh, in celebration of your hundredth ep, hundredth episode, what is a message you want to give to not only listeners, but all Canadians? Uh, that's just going to be continue positivity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To, to the listeners, all Canadians, there's always a positive side. So many people, we are negatively biased creatures. Humans are. You drive by a car accident and you're going to look. Why are we looking? Who got hurt? What's going on? Mm-hmm. Right? It's an instinctive thing that's built into us as a survival mechanism. What could go wrong? We can recognize that. We can accept that, but we should strive to look for where the positive is. Yeah. What could go right? If I do this, what could go right? And I think that would be the biggest message for Canadians, the listeners, everyone in general that I could look at. How can we, how can we look at what is positive and how can we practice a philosophical idea of charity, which is somebody says something to you and you don't automatically come back and say, well, I know exactly what they're saying to me and I'm insulted and I'm this, and I'm going to come back with whatever it might be. What's a positive outtake on that? Why do you think they might be saying that? Is there any other ways that they could be saying that or coming from a different position? Take the time, have them explain it as you work through. A little bit of patience and optimism and positivity is, I think would just benefit everybody as a whole. Yeah. Like it. You're done. I think I got one last one here, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm done here. Okay. Nikki Van Schindel, episode 47, Surviving Alone, 52 Days in the Arctic. And one of her favorite books, My Side of the Mountain, <laughs> happens to be one of my favorite books when I was in, I think, grade four, grade five. And Nikki, if you're listening, I'm going to get you to autograph that book because I have things here in the studio from past guests and I figured that'd be a cool one to have out there. A little Sam Gribbley type uh, <laughs> callback. Says, uh, question is, what adventure in the wild... Have you always wanted to go on to push your edge and what are you doing this year to make it happen? Well, I have always been a firm believer of not talking about your, (laughs) talking about what it is that you're looking at doing and just doing it and then talking about it afterwards, because there is that whole, uh, false satisfaction that you get, the dopamine release that happens when you talk about something and all of a sudden the energy to move towards that is lessened. So I do have a couple things that I am actively working for on right now, which definitely push my comfort zone. It's something I've been looking at for a long time. Um, out in the wild 
And I could say there's a few places I'd like to head to, which I haven't been. I'd like to love to go to Iceland. I'd like to go to Finland. I'd like to go to Italy and do some hunting there. I've been to Italy, but Germany, not hunting, some hunting in Germany. Yep. Talking to you, Marcus and Florian, <laughs> 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 uh, who are going to be on the podcast in the future. Very, really, really cool individuals. Marcus is the uh, head of firearms and hunter education for uh, region of Bavaria there. Uh, Florian is a photographer for National Geographic and Playboy. And a very, very cool individual. Um, But it says to shift perspectives about yourself in the natural world. Well, Nikki, when you get your business going, Luminary Wilderness Ventures, I want to go there. Because that's very different. Talking about going into the wild and saying, hello, Forrest, it's me, Nikki. Hello, Forrest, it's me, Travis, right? That whole sort of thing is something that I could probably uh, use some education on. And that's uh, what I'd be learning in Luminary Wilderness Ventures. That's one thing that would be pushing what I know and I'd love to look forward to. Cool. So I hope I didn't miss anybody in all of this. Is there anything that you'd like to say before we close off, Jeff? No, I don't think so. Okay. Um, I do know Ryan... Uh, from IBI, International Barrels, huge supporter. They've been on here on the podcast in the past. Great episodes. Um, and as well as Martin from MDT has been on the podcast. High quality chassis and stocks and firearms accessories and are all local. Really cool. Uh, both of them were in the process of putting something together. May have come through, but we haven't had a chance <laughs> to get them yet. So I'd give them a shout out in here anyways. Um Everybody that works at Silvercore that's helped make the podcast possible. Holy crow. Fantastic. The efforts that everybody puts in is just amazing. Uh, even past people that have worked. I mean, like I've become friends with uh, a number of people who we've employed or coworkers and uh, the multitude of Daves <laughs> that I know who've taught me to be an entrepreneur and uh, uh, who have put their heart and soul into building the next section of the, um, uh, the silver core journey here, which is going to be launching soon. And, uh, I mean, it's just amazing. Uh, the Jason's I know, and you know, one of them that really knows what is best in life, <laughs> the inf- <laughs> infamous J- Jason. And I think, I mean, by that, that he's more than famous. Yes. He's more than famous. Yes. yes. Um, and you know, Voite. I see you on all our comments on all the, on every single podcast. You didn't ask any questions on here, but I see you on there. Thank you so much for the support. Every single time that something comes up, you're on there and you're supporting. Really appreciate that. I'm sure there's a bunch of people that I've missed on here and I'm sorry if I didn't get to it, but uh, do know this wouldn't be possible without everybody else and all the work that they put in and the support from the community. Thank you again for the 100th episode. Share with others and subscribe if you want to see it grow.